Hey guys, it's Delisa here, and I'm bringing you a video today on a vocal analysis of Mariah Carey. So um, I've done a couple of videos of Mariah Carey before. Um, one of them, I believe, was like how to sing Vision of Love or something like that. Um, it was quite a while ago. And I did another video a couple of years ago about um, really the decline of her voice. But you all did bring to my attention that I've never actually just done a full analysis of her voice. So um, I sat down a couple of days ago and I did an analysis of her voice and a few others. So um, I'm actually gonna be reading off of a piece of paper so that I don't forget anything. And for those of you who know anything about me, you know that I'm visually challenged. So I'll be wearing my glasses and I'm sorry if I don't um, make too much eye contact with the you know camera it's just i'm reading but um yeah so mariah carey upon really like listening to her voice and of course we're talking about mariah carey i would say when did she come out 92 i hate saying dates because you guys are so much better than me at that stuff but um pre-1998 let's just say that i would say she's a lyric colorateur a soprano actually um when I say that because she has a warm, youthful, bright tone, um, very feminine. Um, and I feel like she's a soprano because her voice blossoms as she gets higher. Um, usually a soprano's voice, um, you can really hear whether or not um, what type of soprano they are by, I believe it's how they blossom on either an E5 or an F5. I believe it's an F5. Um, and um, with a soprano, you hear that the full weight of their voice, you hear the full color of their voice as they get higher. And so I believe she is a soprano, lyric soprano. And I put color a terror because color a terror just means someone has precision with fast notes. So you can have any voice type and have and be able to do color a terror, but the brighter, lighter voice types tend to be the ones that would excel in something like color a terror. Someone that's good at runs, melismas, whatever you want to call it. So what makes Mariah Carey unique? Um, she has a very wide range um due to excellent technique and of course we're talking about 1998 and prior mariah um she supports her lower notes very beautifully she's very agile in her lower register so well in fact that some would argue that she is a mezzo soprano or a contralto just with a very high upper extension I don't agree with this view because she doesn't have the power, presence, and agility in her lower register that a true mezzo or contralto possesses. Plus, her voice um, becomes, again, like I said earlier, more beautiful and resonant as she ascends in her range, which is a sign of a true soprano, not a contralto. Um, a true mezzo or a contralto, um, not only do they have beautiful um, warmth in their lower register, but they have power and agility in the lower register and um not to say she doesn't have a good faculty of her lower register but you can hear that it definitely pops and becomes a lot more present as she gets higher um so yeah she has amazing you know vocal technique and amazing range and i said to top all this off she has one of the most impressive and expressive whistle tones which adds pretty much like a a full octave to her range so um with all this she i remember people saying that she had about five octaves it's probably like four and a half i'm sure her range spans across five octaves but i wouldn't say that even at her best she had a full five octaves um but yes she has an amazing range so um what are whistle tones so let's go over whistle tones really quickly how do you produce whistle tones a lot isn't known about whistle tones conclusively because um, in order to produce whistle tones, you have to put a lot of pressure on your larynx and your pharynx, your epiglottis actually completely closes and you kind of depress. Um, I can try to do a whistle tone. It may or may not happen, but let's see. It puts a lot of pressure. <laughs> to sing there you're really closing your throat and you're just singing like um at resting position your vocal cords look like this and pretty much you're just really fusing together the top portion whereas when you're normally singing you're doing this or when you're talking 
spoon, but this is just right there at the tip. So it's not a very healthy way to sing. Um, again, good singing uh, is usually the least amount of pressure, the least amount of tension. Those are the things that you want to cultivate. And so singing whistle tone, you have to learn how to kind of balance it or warm down from that. Um, and just know, you know, like I said, balance really is, is the key to not burning out your voice because you're constantly trying to sing in a whistle tone. So next, what are some of Mariah Carey's setbacks? What are some things that she could maybe improve on? Let's see. Um, again, I just talked about the whistle tones. They're not very healthy. Um, too much pressure on your throat and your cords and can cause damage over time. Mm. Um, she liked to sing with a lot of breathiness. Like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't think of an exact song just now, so that's what came to my mind. But um, that can cause damage can cause damage, can cause damage because over time it will cause hoarseness and a lack of resonance. So what happens when you're singing airy, it's basically that you're under singing and your chords aren't actually touching. And after a while, all that air passing through your vocal cords like that can actually make your voice more hoarse. It can kind of, hmm, I don't really know how to describe it, but you really want to, let's say for the sake of layman's terms, muscle memory, you really want your body to understand that when you are producing sound, you are compressing your vocal cords and always bringing your cords together in order to make a pure, clean sound. And if you start kind of training your body to not do that, it can start to forget it and affect other areas of your singing. Hmm. So in reference to my other videos, what I was um, talking about, some of her setbacks post-1998, um, it could be, um, you know, a lack of a good diet, lack of good rest um, that could affect her vocal cords. She was extremely busy. She put out a lot of albums in a very short amount of time and it completely burnt her out physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I would argue that it's something that she has never fully recovered from. Um, of course, drinking um, and a sense of discipline. Um, she was very disciplined in putting product out, but I don't think she was disciplined in taking care of herself and her instrument. And, you know, the voice is, is one of those things that, you know, if it breaks down, you can't go out and buy another voice, you know? Every other, you know, musician can, you know, dispose of an instrument if it becomes bad or, and repurchase another one. Our voice is a part of who we are. And, you know, once it's broken down, we can rehabilitate it to a point, but let's not make it a point to consistently damage our temple, damage our instrument, and you know, think that it's going to consistently bounce back because that's just not the way the body works. The body wants to heal itself, but it can only heal itself to a point if you're constantly damaging it. So I posed a question to myself and I figured I would answer it. Do I think that she could get her vision of love voice back with her rehabilitation? And my answer to that is no. Um, I feel like she's a bit far gone in, in the, um, her innate gift is still there. She still has a very beautiful voice and I feel like she can be rehabilitated to a point. But to try to get back a voice from 25 years ago um, that has been compromised for at least 15 of those years is a bit of a stretch. But I do feel like with good voice training, she can rehabilitate herself, maybe to get to about 80 to 85% of what she used to have as far as um, power, endurance, agility. Um, but she would have to, there would be some sacrifices that she would have to make. Endurance is probably one of the areas that she would really have to make sacrifices because um, even if she got the power back, even if she got some of that range back, it wouldn't be, she wouldn't have the endurance that she used to have. In other words, she may be able to hit, you know, let's say sing an F5 and a full belt again, or even a G5 and a full belt again, but maybe again, not for the amount of time that she did or she would have to 
really just kind of temper it more than she would have had to back in the day. Um, so those are my notes on, you know, Sister Carrie, Miss Mariah Carey. Thank you guys so much for watching my vocal analysis. Um, tell me what you think. Did I miss something? You know, I'm, I have a feeling I might have been a little off on the dates. So if I was, feel free to let me know. Thanks, you guys. Thank you guys so much for always watching and supporting. Please like, comment, subscribe, share this video with your friends, and look out for my video next week. God bless. Bye-bye.